Hello friends. Those of us who enjoy the esoterica of the golf swing have long noted that there's a great similarity in the mechanics of the golf swing uh, to a siege engine from the Middle Ages called a trebuchet. And I'll play a trebuchet moving for you right now. Yeah, as you saw, uh, it's essentially a framework that suspends a fulcrum um, upon which is assembled a long arm and a short arm. The short arm has a very heavy weight on it. The long arm has a rope attached to it with a basket that would throw a rock. Think of that rock as the head of the golf club. Think of the rope as the shaft. Think of the long arm as our left arm. Now, a trebuchet uses um, the potential, uh, gravitational potential energy that uh, exists when an object is above the Earth, and that's the heavy rock. Uh, and when that weight drops, uh, it then flings the arm, the long arm, over the top and releases the, uh, the smaller rock that's going to be used to try and knock down a castle. Now, using the potential energy uh, from gravity is not available to a golf swing because as you can see I've got this upside down and so the application of force has to be upwards to drive the left arm and the club and therefore the club head down and around one to ground level where the ball is. Now since we're using uh, not uh, potential energy from gravity but we're actually using physical energy then we have to pull around. Uh, it's all we've got. And Percy Burma noted that golf swing is a rotational movement which complicates things. So here we are, we have to spin the body. And so the shoulders, which have turned on the backswing, now have to pull in the other direction. Well, if you pull um, that hard in that direction, eventually you're going to uh, have to release the golf club, as they call it. And there's a release point. It's talked about commonly in golf instruction. And if you watch this play, I'll play it again, you can see that about halfway through the downstroke, the wrists start to straighten out and the club actually passes the long arm, which represents your left arm. And that is very significant because we have to delay that. We don't, as we see with this very simple uh, trebuchet illustration, we don't want to be hitting with the club first and the hand still way back here in front of the right foot. We have to delay that and we'd like to straighten out the wrist just as we get to the ball. So in fact when we apply force twisting in this direction we have to do it upwards and that's why it's important to shift and Ben Hogan very famously has a picture that he initiated the downswing by first of all moving the lower part of him, his hips, legs, to the left. Now you can't do that with this triangle, but interestingly, in the Middle Ages, they found that they got more mechanical advantage, therefore a longer throw of the destructive rock, if they put wheels on it. And it wasn't just because they needed to move it around the, the battlefield, it's because of the mechanics. As the heavy rock dropped, if there are no wheels, it starts to drop and swing in toward the middle, just as the other end's going this way. But if they put wheels on it, when that heavy weight dropped, it stayed more in a straight line and gave more power to the throw. So the equivalent for a human swing in a golf club is that you have to start by shifting everything with your hips to the left, but then make sure that you're rotating and holding on to that angle long enough that when you release it, it's not going to be premature. And so you have to hold those shapes. And that's why all of these books tend to look at the first half of the downswing as not being a powered element. It's just allowed to drop. You have to be patient and only start to apply the pulling and upward force as you get into the second half of the swing. Fascinating.